according to Burkhardt Heim's model. The physical body is more than the integrated sum of its parts. But life in total is even more. And today we will venture in the transcendent nature of the life process. Hello and welcome to Six Dimensions in Color. My name is Hannes Schmidt and I explain to you Burkhardt Heim's worldview in understandable language and with clear examples. In the last video, I introduced you into the entelechial layer structure of living matter. And I want to underline one word here, namely matter. We have looked so far only onto the structured matter of which the physical body consists. So I've spoken about macromolecules and cells and tissues and, and organs, etc. If we look at them, we can state that they cannot be broken down any further. The whole cannot be broken down any further into subcomponents without losing its wholeness, and lack of a better word. So every time this wholeness increases, then it means the underlying or the, the superordinate structure lies on another level. The governing structure lies on another level of this letter structure of the dimension X5. Well, scientists, scientists have ever since, I think, struggled to define what life actually is. If you look it up on Wikipedia today, you will find a fairly, fairly firm definition. But I think the discussion is not over. Anyway, one aspect that everyone agrees upon is life reacts to stimuli. It somehow perceives it and it somehow reacts to whatever. And that this reacting to something, reacting to inputs, means there must be something, some kind of processing structure, which is part of the whole living thing. But if we have a structure, some kind here, that that is responsible for this reacting, where does it lie? It is certainly not, it can certainly not be located on these intellectual levels 7 through 15, because they only describe the physical, the physical arrangement of the matter involved. And most certainly it's not on, on levels 0 through 6, because that's only, they only describe the inanimate matter. Therefore, stimulus, registration and processing can obviously not be material structures after all. They must be something else. Of course, you may say, well, scientists say the, the, this processing structure is, this, it lies in the brain and it's uh, connected to nerve cells and synapses, etc. All right, but don't get fooled from the logic of, of trivial textbooks and TV shows on this matter. Because if you look into the real science behind, the scientific community is highly divided between those who say, who are true materialists and say, all phenomena of life, including behavior and consciousness, are just byproducts of what well, they can be reduced to biochemical processes. They are nothing else. And we are not really our experience. We are not really there. We are just kind of imagining ourselves. And there are then there are the others who say this cannot be enough. And despite all the billions of dollars and euros that have been invested in finding out how the brain works and how consciousness works and all that, we haven't, we haven't got a clue how these are actually produced inside the brain. I want to argue this way. Of course, nerve tissues, synapses, the brain itself, they are part of the, of the realm of the bios. And there are neural correlates for certain perceptions, for certain behavior in the brain. Yes, okay. But 
the processing itself, that's not a brain cell. That's something that runs on the brain cell, if you want. You can take an analogy between hardware and software of a computer. It's not a good analogy because on a computer you cannot discern between different intellectual levels. In, in, the real, in real life, so to say, you can. So synapses are connected to each other, all right, that's the biological pattern. But the pattern processing, well, the processing of the whole thing, that's not the biological pattern, that's a certain activity of this network. And this activity of the network is not the network itself. That's a huge difference. Every time in Burkhard Heim's six-dimensional world, every time we have something, we have a logical category that is exceeded. That means we enter into a new totality. So the organizational, so the pattern that runs on our, our nerve cells. It's something on another intellectual level, it must be. And therefore, we are entering a new totality here, an immaterial one, because it is, it is linked to the material totality of the nerve tissue, but it is not this totality itself. If you have always been of the opinion that the brain is simply kind of biological carrier or a transceiver for something else, whatever that is, then you will say, all right, you will agree what I said. If you haven't thought this way, then con consider this. If you, are, if you consequently abide by the laws of logic, they fail if you argue any further. The difference between classical brain research and Burkhard Heim's model is that the former says, all these are just epiphenomena, they are not real. But in Burkhard Heim's model, we can say, but yes, they are. They are real in a physical sense. And fortunately, within Burkhard Heim's model, we do not need to worry about the whereabouts of these real yet immaterial things, because we have two additional dimensions, which we call the trans realm of the world, in which reside all things that are well, that have no material component. And now we have to come back to elementary particle physics. If you remember that video, I'm linking it up here, there are four different types of, Heim called it hermitry forms, that is deformations of the underlying metronic grid, that this um, six-dimensional grid that underlies reality, not important for now, but there are six um, there are four types. There are masses, mass particles charged and uncharged. There are photons. And there, then there is this fourth type. Well, actually, it's the first type in Heim's list, which he called activities. And these activities, they only have components which reside in dimensions five and six. So they are, by, by nature, something immaterial. And, but all others, all other three hermitry forms, light and neutral and charged particles, they as well, they have always an activity component. That's because activity means it's a structure and there can be no matter without a structure anyway. So every material structure extends, if you will, into the trans realm, into the immaterial. And that holds true for elementary particles as well as for the higher totalities like molecules and like cells and like the whole body. So everything that is in this world, it's also in the transcendent world, it has an extension. So every material structure must have a transcendent structure. But on the other hand, there can be transcendent structures which, ha which are not material or which have no material component. And yet, the trans components of material structures can interact with structures that have no material component whatsoever. And that's where we want to go, because we are searching something that is immaterial, like this pattern, this structure that processes central inputs, and at the same time is somewhat linked to the material body and can influence it. Now we get to one of Burkhard Heim's more 
creative own word creations. If the physical matrix is stimulated, that is, per, for example, light hits your retina, then this process gains meaning if it is processed in the body. Imagine like that, light hits, a photon hits the chromophore enzymes in your, in the cells in your eye, and then the, the, the whole cell is, is stimulated. But a huge number of cells stimulate the optical nerve. And the optical nerve goes into the, the visual cortex where it's, the whole thing is processed into a three-dimensional image of both eyes. That is, the singular, the singular event, or a, a huge number of singular events, which is photons hitting, hitting these chromophore enzymes, they gain meaning as a whole. And that it can be described as a rising stream of activities. It's actually a good metaphor for it. Of course, there is no tube or channel in which something streams. It's a gain of meaning. Activity means, activities mean they have structure and structure has meaning. And the, the higher a structure is, the higher its meaning. So the whole three-dimensional image that you see, or two-dimensional image if you watch on the screen of your, of your mobile phone right now, it has a higher meaning than the singular than the singular events that lead to it. And the highest totality into which this rise of meaning goes, that high I'm called and the intermittent, intermitting, intermittent lead metroplex of correlative properties, or short, the ill core. The ill core is, you can say it's the self of any, of any kind of entity of yourself, of a cell, and whatever. So any kind of physical stimulus is processed in a way that it's rising through these totalities as an increasing stream, as a rising stream of activities. And then this input may be processed into a reaction. And the reaction goes the other way around. The reaction starts as an intention, for example, to move my hand left or right. And this goes into my, my motoric nerves, into my muscle cells, into the individual, individual fibro, uh, fibrinogen, into the individual proteins that enact the movement. And the whole thing moves in a coordinated way. All the singular atoms, all the single atoms in my hand move in a coordinated way into that direction without any failure. And this corresponds to a decreasing stream, a descending stream of activities. So the point is this ill core, this processing structure, is outside the physical world. And this explains a lot of, thi a lot of things that are quite interesting if you come to think about it. Maybe you have heard of this experiment where um, well, the big toe is pinched and the stimulus is registered in the, in the brain instantaneously and not two seconds after, according what would be according to the theory of, of nerve, nerve conduction speed. It may become conscious after two seconds, but it is registered immediately. And if there is a, a non-spatial temporal connection from the toe and the brain and the, on the transcendent side, it's quite logical. This whole intellectual realm in which the Ilkor resides, Heim called the realm of gamma, the psyche. Yet Ilkor is maybe the better word because it's more general. The psyche is something that we would usually only assign to human beings and maybe to higher animals. But in this model, even things like a singular, like the, the elementary biological units, enzymes and DNA, also singular cells and viruses, etc., they have such a transcendent structure, an ill core. We would never speak of a psyche here, but there is something that gives their existence a self, however rudimentary. 
In fact, every level of organization of the biological realm, the realm beta, is linked to one totality. Every totality of the realm beta is linked to a totality in the realm gamma. And that is because, I said, even the elementary biological units, they have some rudimentary ill core, uh, a self, in lack for a better word. If the material components are centrometrically incorporated into a higher structure, like DNA is incorporated into chromosomes, then the transcendent structures cooperate as well. Then there is a higher structure, a higher transcendent structure and higher ill core, of which the sub ill cores, uh, of which the ill cores of the subcomponents remain like something like sub ill cores. They are governed by the higher whole. But this means each and every of these nine biological and intellectual levels that we have distinguished is connected to one layer on the realm of the psyche. And that means we have another nine levels to add here, and we can we can we can label them 16 through 24. As a conclusion, what happens if you find this video amazing? Once again, light from your screen hits the chromophore pigments, the enzymes in your retina, and a stream of activities ri rises through your optical nerve into your into your, your visual cortex, and you register the meaning of everything I say. Of course, it also goes through the ear. Then you register the meaning of what I I say of the pictures, etc. Let's process into something. Well, you find it you find it good. It gives you something something new, some new knowledge, and you decide to like the video. That means the action of a falling stream of activity occurs. It goes through your motoric nerves, into your, your hand, into the singular, the singular muscle cells and muscle, muscle fibers, and you click the like button and subscribe and notify directly afterwards. Now we have a model in which we can talk about all the interesting phenomena of the psyche, of our consciousness, etc. We have a language in which to talk about immaterial things in a physical way. However, however strange this may sound, I mean of course in the sense of physical science. Anyway, we're going to talk about all these interesting things in the next videos in six dimensions and in color.